Hi, I'm Colonel Charlie Kibben from Crane Army Ammunition Activity. And today I'd like to take you on a journey of Lean and Six Sigma and how it has had a significant impact on our organization. The journey that we're going to go on will help you see how Lean and Six Sigma can improve quality, effectiveness, and efficiency for your organization. My greatest fulfillment is knowing that the ATAC Center works. It works for Crane Army, it'll work for other depots. Regardless of people, personalities, here at Crane Army we get the job done because we do work together as a team. The team was really open, everyone was able to voice their opinions, put in their comments, it really helped the successfulness of the team. To hear people say, I really didn't think you could improve upon the process because I've been doing this for so long and come to find out you were able to come in, your team was able to come in and improve upon the process. You made it better for me, you made it easier for me, and my life seems to be a lot better. We turn out, it's a tremendous amount of work out of that little bitty shop we have. And Lean Six Sigma has helped us even to turn out a more. The quality's there, our quantity has increased. It was just a real good program. The benefits that I get from Lean Six Sigma is basically when you think about the process, it's really a paradigm change. It's about change and it's about innovation. The things that we get from Lean Six Sigma here at Crane Army Ammunition are, is, first of all, it really does delight the customer because it improves the quality that we have in the products that we have out there. Also, it improves our processes across the board, uh, which enhances our efficiencies and reduces our cost. Uh, what I really like about it as a commander is it really builds the teamwork of the organization. It gets the total involvement of the workforce from the leaders all the way down to the people that are out there on the line every day. And really it's driven by data, which unlike some of the other systems we've had in the past, that data really helps us to look and make sure that we're making the best changes that we have across the board. really about the customer. Our strategy ties in the quality that we provide to the customer, but it also looks out to the future of the organization. What we do right now is we look at what we're doing today to make it better for tomorrow. My Lean Six Sigma philosophy is all about making this organization better. That's the bottom line. That's what we're here to do. What we're here to do is provide a service and the service that we provide is to the American people. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that that process and those things that we do can be done in the most cost efficient manner uh, and basically to the highest quality because somebody's life depends on it. Without the leader involvement, then uh, this, really, this process really isn't happening. But you know, I say I'm the key player but it's about the emphasis that I provide because it's really about the buy-in of the people in the organization. Uh, no one's really going to have a great Lean and Six Sigma program unless you get buy-in from the rest of the individuals that are out there actually doing it. The thing that we gain the most is we gain that paradigm of change and innovation. If you look at it overall in a great perspective, the world is a continuous changing place. This business is continuously changing. And we need to look at the processes that we have because perhaps the processes we had today aren't the ones we need to approach for the future. So we need to have a way to go back and look at those things to make sure that we're tying what we're doing today so that we're better enabling us to do what we need to do in the future. We've seen tremendous improvements across the board. Every day that Lean and Six Sigma has been involved in this operation in this organization, we've seen improvements. We've seen improvements in processes. We've seen improvements in cost, efficiency, quality. And overall, it's been kind of the linchpin that's tied together those things that we need to do today to prepare for tomorrow.
leadership is very important to basically any process, but very important to the Lean and Six Sigma process because it requires a focus. It requires leaders to be focused on continuous improvement. It requires the use of resources to accomplish that task. And, and if you don't have the leadership commitment behind it, well, basically, you're not going to have a very strong Lean and Six Sigma program. Running and managing the Lean Six Sigma program is a very collective effort from the front office, the colonel, the CEA, through the CI office with the subject matter experts, the master black belts, the black belts, as well as the deployment director, all the way through the organization, through the layers of leadership, right into the, uh, the trench fighters, you know, those in the trenches that are turning the wrenches. It has to be a, a complete cultural envelopment of how we want to do business here at Crane. Don't try and fit a problem into strictly a DMAIC process, a Lean Six Sigma Green Belt or Black Belt project. We follow a four block based on do you understand what the root cause is, yes or no, do you know the solution, yes or no, and let that matrix lead you to what tool set to use. What is good about the program at CAAA is we've invested into a full-time Lean Six Sigma asset, the Master Black Belts, the Black Belts. It's not in stone. We understand it's going to change over time. We're not afraid, if something's not working, to re-engineer, think outside the box. What we've done is we've developed a communication tool through the, the weekly Lean Six Sigma scorecard that tracks every project that we're doing. It allows the commander, as well as the senior leadership, to see how fast projects are moving. If a project turns red, yellow, indicating there's delays, it's missing certain milestone dates, which cues other questions of why is this occurring. It keeps the projects at the forefront of everybody's mind because they're continuously reminded of this. And it's been a very useful tool for us to just to keep things pushing forward instead of stagnating. Creating a cultural shift is one of the most challenging things that we're doing within the CI office. Part of that is understanding that nobody likes change. You're gonna be in somebody's backyard and they don't want you there. You're gonna to have to be thick-skinned and suck up the heat rounds and just persevere and persevere. Lessons learned out of that is you bring that skeptic into the decision cycle. Let him see how the thought process and methodologies of Lean Six Sigma work. And then when you get to an improved state, the buy-in is already there, and then they see the first-hand results. It does have its challenges, but you got to get the results in the end state. You started here, you end up here, and the real selling point is, isn't this better for you? And typically it is. We're working smarter, we're working more efficient, and the benefit of that project goes to that skeptic that's challenging it. Then once you start getting those converts, then that natural change of culture begins to happen because you've got that buy-in. We manufacture infrared and illuminating candles for mortar programs. With this particular black belt project, we want to look at reducing the unit cost with the 81 millimeter candle. We want to look at cost, quality, and another important aspect was, it, was delivery. Probably the greatest challenge was digging out the details in each particular operation from the beginning to the end, taking multiple cycle times, being honest with the operators, operators being honest with me, and finding out exactly how much time it took to do a particular operation. This stuff has been in place for years, and we're just now catching up to it. And it's beneficial that we do that. You know, if we want to stay in business here at Crane, we've got to do this. And people's got to realize that, and we've got to change the culture here. And so they understand that. And by having people on our team, our production associates, I think that comes across to them after they see the improvements that, you know, we mean business here, and we're, we're trying to do this. We were able to lower the 81 millimeter unit cost. We were able to take all of our inert component operations, move them into one room. They had previously been 
strung throughout the, throughout the building. And after we brought them in that room, we were able to streamline it and made it flow a lot better. I think my greatest fulfillment is the positive feedback from the operators. Um, I actually heard one person make the comment that their process was a lot better than it used to be. After we implemented all the improvements to the processes, the operators coming in there, seeing that their ideas were actually implemented, that was probably my biggest joy. Our pyrotechnics division produces mortar candles and visual light and, and IR. Our machine shop actually fabricates the canisters for those candles. And our plating shop zinc plates those canisters to help prevent them from rusting so they're, they're less susceptible to corrosion. The plating production could not keep up with pyro's consumption. We considered pyro our customer. We did not know the root cause of some quality concerns that we were having that led to a lot of rework and also led to frequent solution changeouts. Just we didn't know what was going on. We had two or three big issues. One was our blistering of our cans. When we spot welded our support plate on them, we were having a problem blistering on the cans where they weren't going through inspection. The operators knew what was going on. They knew if they added a pinch of this or a dash of that when it subjectively looked like this, it would solve the problem, but not necessarily the science and mechanics behind why inaction would help. This project was able to teach that science behind it, show them the data-driven science, and that made them more and more hungry for data. We resolved the problem through Lean Six Sigma, and our quality has changed. Our life of our solution tanks has increased immensely from, from three months up to 18 months. Lean Six Sigma has introduced us to a new filtration system that we, we didn't know about. So they helped us out big time. You're changing the culture. You're going from a culture that flies by the seat of the pants to a culture going, okay, well, you say you have a pain. Let me see the data. You know, how bad is your pain? What does it feel like? How much does it cost us? How often does it happen? You start learning to ask different questions and trying to get that data. And when you start getting get that data, then you can actually analyze it and go, whoa, you know, because I measured it this way, I discovered that this is my root cause, and we never would have thought about that before when we were flying by the seat of our pants. The ATAC Center was um, developed out of a lean event. We had a lot of processes that were independent of each other, even though they needed to be intertwined. We had nobody that had the overall vision of what was going on out there. Well, the scale house is a major issue causing us detention time. By the time you ever got the truck, the Army did, the Navy had already used up all your time that that truck was supposed to be on the base, so you were already behind the eight ball. Hence, that's why we were having the large detention charges every year. We looked and timed what happened at the front gate when security did air check, what happened at the scale house, and, and tried to get an average measurement of how long those trucks sat there. We ended up decreasing our annual detention charges, which were running in excess of $65,000 a year, to zero. We've got solid data to back up everything that we say. You know, you have different perceptions as to what the shortfall was. Well, now we've got the information and the data to go back and, and prove out our theories or our, or our comments that we make on, on what's going on. I think the main lesson learned is you have to have buy-in. If you do not have buy-in from your top organization, the ATAC Center won't work for you. The buy-in from the top organization rolls down and therefore our suggestions, requests and things are taken more to heart. That way they know that we're there for the mission. This is a decoy flare, it's a thrusted flare. This ejects out of an aircraft to decoy a missile. It took a long time to develop it and uh, once the development group arrived at a design that worked, they didn't want to change anything. There is a thermal epoxy that's poured in here through this top cavity. You have to remove this re remaining residual epoxy by hand. 
To protect the operators that were doing this, we had to put them in heavy gloves, similar to oven mitts. The issue with this was the difficulty handling the epoxy. When we first went into production, we had some residual material epoxy on the outside, which caused a failure. Another uh, problem with this particular operation, scooping this out, very labor intensive. It added a lot of cost to the item. To solve the problem, we took an approach, well, let's let the epoxy solidify, and then we'll machine the epoxy out. So what we ended up doing was setting up a small test. We proved that we could machine the epoxy out after it had set up. It made us go back and look at our measurement system. When you go back and do the gauge R&R study, it's like, you know, this, we, are, we don't really have, our data is not that good. The gauge R&R portion of the program really opened my eyes as far as uh, how dependent we are on those and really how unreliable they are and how they could uh, let poor quality end up in the product. We came up with a sound, repeatable, process that produced a quality item. From a customer standpoint, we were able to almost double the number of units that we could provide with the same amount of funding. Lean Six Sigma was rewarding from a standpoint, it just it was a very structured approach to problem solving. It turns out that this change was a, a wonderful change for this product. It knocked a lot of cost off and improved our quality. Surveillance is the division that inspects ammunition. We have to look at the ammunition before we send it to the customer. There was an excessive variation in the inspection process between inspectors, and this was leading to a backlog of periodic and receipt inspections. Because we had a backlog, we had constant schedule changes, we had a lot of excess overtime. We were trying to improve the speed at which uh, the inspection process was done. One of the problems we hit on was the line layout, which we did change. We went from a, a linear to a oval shape. Instead of having to walk to the item, you were basically bringing the items to the inspector. We had to add jib cranes to the line, which would allow the wage grade five material handler to lift the material off the table, but also back on the table when they brought a new pallet in. It made me feel good as a team that we were able to accomplish what we did. The wage grade, the GS, and WS all worked together very well, were very open. It was just really impressive that we were able to accomplish as much as we did. The greatest lesson learned is that even the best process typically can be improved upon. The surveillance workshop is actually one of two inspection facilities we have. We wanted to look at our production control function and uh, that just grew into this uh, surveillance monitoring and control system that we developed. When it came time to make the thing happen, to we got 63 inch monitors we hung up so that uh, you, and we put the, the system out on our drive so people can see it, anybody can go in and look at what's going on. What we ended up with was an Excel-based spreadsheet that gives people the opportunity to make their input and gives everyone else visibility of that input. We improved the, the time lapse of getting material in and out of the building by about six hours, which is pretty significant. It was pretty nice. It was nice to see everybody working together on the thing. That was my biggest thrill. The primary responsibilities of Crane Army is storing ammunition for the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. And we do have several hundred storage magazines and buildings, and we do store several hundred thousand tons of, of munition items. When we began looking at this, we discovered that we receive somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 truck shipments every year. We unfortunately found out that we had been multiple handling over 3,400 of those trucks in some cases as many as four times. This could cause a slowdown in getting those munitions to the warfighter on the war front. Planning, this is Amber. Good morning. We basically instituted some standardized reporting requirements for the incoming truck shipments, as well as some electronic data transfer. 
we were able to actually cut down the percentage of trucks that were double handled by over 27 percent. We were also able to cut down the cost in the double handling by about over $300,000 and I think that's a huge saving for Crane. And, uh, and it, it really makes you feel good when you do something like that. And we've got a good bunch of people out there that you know work hard and do a really good job and, and I think that just the cost savings alone is, is just makes you feel good that you're a part of that. I have a son in the Marine Corps. Obviously I have a very personal stake in making sure that the warfighter has absolutely everything he needs to do his job. So whatever we can do to be more efficient in making that happen, in my opinion, is money and time well spent. You can make anything happen. We change the way we do business.